So I was struck by the second, the, the, the psalm today. Um, this is Psalm 51. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, traditionally seen as the, the prayer that David prayed after he had been called out. Now, you remember the story of David? Oh yes, Father, yes, of course we do. But just for the two of you that might have forgotten, there is that time when um, David was not going off to war with his army like he should have, and he was just hanging out, looking over the area, and what does he see? He sees a woman bathing, and uh, he gets all up about it and um, decides to have her come over for a, a sleepover. Um, and uh, needless to say, when she gets pregnant, uh, bad things happen because he realizes something's going to happen here. He tries to get her husband to come back from the army and uh, take care of things, but in, eventually he has her husband killed. And so he thinks, okay, I've gotten away with my sin by compounding sin upon it, but God sees all. And so he sends the prophet Nathan to say, um, yeah, God knows. And so when he recognizes this, unlike many who might harden their hearts, he repents. And while there are, um, there is a fallout when evil happens, it affects the world. Even when we're forgiven, the evil affects the world. It affects the world in ways that cannot be reversed. And so, he cries out, Have mercy on me, God, in your goodness, and the greatness of your compassion wipe out, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and cleanse me of my sin. And so God does forgive him. But the line that struck me is actually in the third stanza today. A clean heart create for me, O God. And uh, one of the uh, scripture scholars I listened to says that that word create there in Hebrew, a clean heart create for me, O God. That word to create is used elsewhere in the Bible only about God. So in Genesis chapter 1, God speaks and things are created. He says, let there be light. Woo! And there is light. That Almighty God speaks and things are created. And that creation is different from when we create. When we create, we create from what's already here. When God creates, He creates from nothing. And that's what this word is talking about. He's saying, a clean heart Create for me, O oh God. What's he saying? I can't purify myself. I can't heal myself. Only God can heal me. Only God can purify me. Only God can take this heart of stone that I have within me and soften it so it becomes a heart of flesh. Only God can recreate me from the inside out. And as I was pondering over this, I'm thinking, but what's our part in this? Do we have to do anything or do we just lay back on the couch with our feet up eating bonbons, allowing God then to just uh, heal us? Well, why doesn't he do that? And the truth is God will not heal us without our permission without our action. So, our action is useless. On, it, on, our, on its own, our action cannot recreate our hearts. It cannot give us a new heart. It cannot do that. Nothing we do will be able to create that within us. But God will not create that heart within us without our participation. So we can't do it without God and God won't do it without us. And so we have to do the work, of course. We have to open ourselves. We have to pray. We have to uh, do the, the hard work of saying, I want to choose right. I want to choose virtue. And remember, virtue is a habit. 
It's not just, I choose something good right now. It's a habit that is something that's part of our lives. And so I cannot do this without working on trying to build this, this habit. But then I can't do it at all. That then allows God to say, okay, I will now choose to do this in you. So as we come for healing tonight, I was pondering over this and praying over this throughout the week saying, you know, people are going to be coming Saturday night. Or Friday night. What is today? Friday. Tuesday? Friday. Tuesday night? What, whatever day of the week it is. I don't know. It's one of those days that ends in Y. Um, people are going to be coming Friday night. And I love it when people say to me, Father, can you heal me? No. I can't heal you. I have no power to heal you. Nothing within me can heal you. I can slap you in the face. I can give you a cup of water, but I can't heal you. Only God can heal you. Now sometimes he chooses to use me as a weak vessel just to show you, say, see, even God can use, use someone like him. But it's God who is healing. And when we come today, we're coming into the presence of our God in the sacraments, right? Where he changes bread and wine into his very body and blood. He's here. He is here. He is here. And He brings us His healing. Question is, are we open to it? Will we allow God to come and to transform us? To bring us the healing we need? You know, I've been pondering over that story of um, the, the uh, paralytic. You remember the one who his friends bring him and they lower him down through the roof and comes before Jesus. And Jesus' first words to him are, My son, your sins are forgiven. And everyone else around him might have been thinking, other than we know what the Pharisees were thinking of, Ooh, but God alone can forgive sins. I think everybody else was saying, I think he wants to be healed of his paralysis. But that man lying on the cot must have known he needed his sins forgiven far more than he needed to be able to rise and walk. But Jesus being gracious and generous and merciful, he did both. Sometimes we think we know what we need, sometimes we don't. But the beautiful thing is, God wants to heal our deepest wounds. What are those areas where we have allowed fear to drive us? What are the areas of addiction? What are the areas where we have said, no, I want my way before God? What are the areas of our lives that need healing in our soul? What are the areas that we need healing in our mind? Our way of thinking. Do we go along with the thinking of the world which says, do whatever you want? Or do we go along with the thinking of God which is that He will bring us His goodness? Even if it hurts in this moment. Even, even, dare I say, if it means we have to say no to ourselves right now. Ugh. And yet we do this all the time for other things, right? How many of you, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. How many of you have ever been on a diet? Let's be honest here. We have to say no. I'm not asking for a show of hands. <laughs> we have to say no to ourselves because we're saying we want something better. Something better for ourselves. And God says, I want something better for you. And that means sometimes you have to say no to yourself. And I know for me, it's like, God, but I really want this. And he says, no, no, you really don't. You only think you do. I have something even better. Something even better. What are the areas that we need to have a healing of our mind? the way we think about the world, the way we think about ourselves? What are the ways that we need healing in our bodies? Sometimes those are the most obvious, because that's where it hurts. 
But sometimes that's not what God wants to heal first. So we entrust our bodies, our minds, our souls to the hands of Almighty God today. And we say to Him, Create in me a new heart. Make me something out of nothing. Make me new.